All right, so who remembers part one of this video? Well, you should, it was just the other day, where we were getting crazy artifacting and all kinds of problems with our 2200G based extremely cheap gaming PC. Well, we have fixed the problem here. We're gonna talk about that and then we're gonna get into some of the performance metrics of how this computer performed and whether or not I recommend it. Remember, the whole point of these videos is to try out these combos and see if they work and whether or not you should go and buy it. But first, you should listen to this message from our sponsor. You know, in hindsight, it was probably a bad idea to bet the car. I told you, never bet on red. Never bet on red. Didn't just say he's gonna help us out. Where is he anyway? I don't know. All I know is he said that we would know when he was close. How are we supposed to fit in this? I have actually an idea. We can do like... It's a V12. Yeah, it's a nice car. I'm sure that's what you're saying right now. No, no, it can't be quiet. Dude, I got you covered. Everything he needs in the trunk. Jay, in front of the car. Right. What the heck am I supposed to do with a Meshify C Mini? Dude, it's like the Meshify C Mini. You know what stuff you can fit in there? You'll get it figured out. You know what? I got an idea. So if you go into settings and check our video, make sure that we are full screen and there it is. It keeps showing this crazy resolution though, 1440 by 560. That's not the resolution we're actually running. We're running 1600 by 900. And then we hit confirm and if we go back, it still says 1440. But I think that's some sort of bug. I, I don't know. Anyway, besides the point, we fixed the issue. Now, a lot of you guys were giving us a lot of your own particular solutions of what you thought they were. Now, hardware-wise, we ruled everything out hardware-wise. We, we switched the motherboard, which we thought was the problem. Wasn't the problem, it persisted. We tried different RAM because APUs use system memory, shared system memory, to give you the VRAM that you need for your APU to work. Tried different RAM, that wasn't it. Tried uh, putting in a graphics card and it worked fine which was pretty much expected because that's a completely self-contained video processing unit, which uh, obviously took the APU out of the equation. But we tried a different CPU, the problem persisted. So what we ended up doing also was thinking, okay, this has gotta be software related. We tried reinstalling Ryzen Master. We used DDU to make sure that all of the drivers were uninstalled, reinstall it, problem persisted. Go to AMD's website, download their latest driver, problem persisted until Phil, Phil had an idea of just doing basically a search and try and find out if anyone else had these similar problems. And what we found was 1803 Microsoft uh, Windows 10 has always been the, seems to be the root of everyone's problem these days. And the latest adrenaline driver were having some sort of a problem, but it wasn't always the same games. Like some people have a problem in PUBG, some people have a problem in Fortnite. Obviously we were having the problem in CSGO and in Friday the 13th. And what we found is if you go to AMD's website here, we're gonna do this real quick. So if you go to drivers and support and you go over here to manually select your driver as you would expect, we download APU processor with graphics. We select here our desktop APU processor with graphics. And then if we go over here, select your product, Ryzen 3 processors with Radeon Vega graphics, which is what we've got. And we're using Windows 10 64-bit. It's the only option, it requires Windows 10. But you'll see right here, the Adrenaline Edition 18.5.1. But when we found, when we downloaded this and installed it, it was downloading uh, technically not the latest version of the driver. So, so Phil actually found through a search, if we did a Google search for Q2 2018, Adrenaline driver is now available with support for the 2400G. So we went there and that brings up a Twitter post where AMD actually mentions it. So then if you go to this download link right here, this bit.ly, when was this put up? This was put up May 18th. If we go here and download now the Adrenaline Edition Q2 2018 release notes and then download the actual driver that's here and we will link to it in the description, that solved our problem. But what's funny is we found that when we then installed it and then did an automatic you know, search for the latest driver, it actually recommended an older driver than the one it was actually trying to install. So AMD itself has still not like updated the page, I guess, to recommend this driver. But this driver fixed our problem. So that was a long way of saying it was a driver issue, but the problem was downloading the latest driver from the list was not bringing us to this one. 
Okay, so here we are now with our 2200G, our eight gigabytes of Patriot DDR4, and it is overclocked to 3.75 gigahertz, and our memory is running 2800 megahertz, I believe it is. And we are going to use AMD, uh, AMD Ryzen Master to try and squeeze out maybe just a little bit more performance. The 2200G is like literally the bare bones, bottom of the bottom, entry level way of getting into gaming. And the idea here was if you have a limited budget, can you build a system that you can build upon without it being like completely obsolete by trying to add things like a GPU or whatnot. So our temperatures, as you can see, are running really good. We're only sitting in the 25.7 and we are running the stock cooler. If we go into game mode, it actually crashed on me at 1250, which is unfortunate. So I'm gonna go ahead and back this down just to like 1200, because that gives us only a 100 megahertz overclock which is probably not going to be very noticeable. But the problem is when I apply this, it needs to reboot the system and that's sucky. It didn't always do that. So now we have to wait. But if we look at the driver version, even here, it just says Adrenaline Q2 2018. It doesn't actually give you a driver number. Um, I think it might show it in actual Ryzen Master or even Radeon software. You can see we are running 2800 megahertz memory because it's 1400 times two, right? DDR double data rate. So let's go ahead and start up Friday the 13th. Uh, video settings, uh, again, that resolution is very odd. We're just gonna leave it, it's being dumb. We're gonna run here, anti-aliasing medium. We'll just run the medium preset. How's that? That'll work, works for me. Confirm, so we'll try this one out. Basically, I gotta kill people and I get bonus points for doing it with various objectives, meaning don't let them see you, trap them in a trap, push Chad's face in the fire. It's really a wholesome family game. So you can see in the little cutscene, we're only getting 22 FPS, 19, 17. Okay, maybe we'll try low settings because that's already pretty bad. This Jason looks dumb. This is playable FPS though. Oh shit, she juked me. She juked me like every other woman I've ever chased with an ax. All right, so mid 40s appears to be roughly our average. All right, so we're in Doom. If we go to our settings, sure, we might be seeing 50 FPS up here. We're here running 1600 by 900. Everything is like off low, 100% resolution scale. Phil is suggesting we drop that down to like 70, but we'll see how this goes. Everything is low, 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 trilinear, MSAA is off. So, I mean, it's playable is probably gonna be subjective at this point. FPS is, like I said, sitting in the 40s. The CPU can handle it. This is clearly just GPU as being really, really pushed hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and try an older title now. I'm gonna try Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. This is a game that was definitely hard to run in its heyday, but it's been a few years since this has come out now. We are at medium settings at 1600 by 900 native resolution. But as you can see in the benchmark track, we are again down into the 30s, 33. What makes low FPS terrible is the fluctuations. Same thing with high FPS. If you have really high FPS, but there's big swings of, of, of fluctuation, then that would obviously portray as a bad experience. We had an average of 36.78, a minimum of 25, and a max of 50. So we're gonna go ahead and switch that to low and see what happens. So we went up to an uh, average of 48.02. So yeah, we gained about 10 FPS or so across the board, a little bit higher, a 14 on our max. What I would honestly recommend at this point is the, the CPU is great. It's really not bad at all for a hundred bucks and you can play something on it. If you wanted to play side scroller games or like indie games from Steam, this would be able to do it all day long without a problem. If you're starting to get into modern or even modernistic titles, titles that are running on popular engines like Unreal um, or even Doom, as you saw, which is normally pretty lenient with low end hardware, was still giving us a little bit less than desirable experience with the 2200G that is overclocked 100 megahertz right now. So what happens if you were to just save a little longer, go mow some lawns, donate blood. I guess you would have to sell it. If you just gave it away and didn't get anything for it, then it's not gonna help with your build. You get what I'm saying here. I'm gonna put in a GTX 960 right now that we were able to find for about 80 bucks to $100 used on Craigslist or other forums like overclock.net, places like that. You can find these GPUs usually all day long. And let's see what our performance increase was with the same hardware, but just throwing in a GPU, which in my opinion would be the next logical upgrade path. So this is the MSI GTX 960 Gaming. This was actually my dad's GPU, and this was a GPU I highly recommended at the time that it was new. It, I still recommend it, honestly, all the way up to 1080p gaming at uh, medium to high settings, depending on the titles. But that's one of the reasons why when I did this and my rationale and the parts that we chose was why I didn't want to go with a super low end power supply 
simply because now we can actually run this because we have enough power supply power to go with it. That's why we went with that 500 watt power supply from EVGA. So now I can toss this in there. It's not gonna have any problems being powered by our, our power supply because we have PCI Express power plugs. And now we are gonna get an immediate increase in our gaming performance by simply plugging in this guy. So the 960 is installed, and the nice thing about having a discrete GPU is the fact that we can overclock it. Because the APU, you can't overclock with MSI Afterburner, you have to use AMD Ryzen Master or the BIOS, and it's super picky. But here I just did a simple plus 100 on the GPU core, plus 250 on the memory, bumped up our fan speed. So now we're gonna go ahead and jump back into Friday the 13th and play the same titles that we just did, and we're gonna compare the performance, which is obviously, obviously gonna be a lot higher because remember, 1600 by 900 resolution. A 960 can handle a 1080p without a problem, but it's just going to decimate 1600 by 900. No problems whatsoever. Now these are the same exact settings we left off with with the APU and already in the menu, you can see we jumped up to 120 plus FPS. It set itself up to high. Remember we were at low when we were getting the 40-ish FPS. Now we're at high, but look at the FPS, 150-ish in menu. Much smoother already. A little bit of dip. Obviously there's a lot of particle effects and stuff happening there, but clearly a much better experience. All right, well, obviously we proved our point with Friday the 13th, so let's head over to Doom. So we're on the Vulcan API still, overall quality high, and anisotropic filtering, 4X, anisotrop, any, anisotropic? Anisotropic, Anis anisotropic. That thing is set to 4X. And if you look at our video here, you can see here's our resolution. We have X FXAA on, which we did not have before. Yeah, look at the FPS already. 90s, it's super smooth. There is absolutely no rubber banding as like before where it felt really kind of wobbly and jello-y. Medium settings, 100 FPS. This is the one that we were only getting 30s, mid 30s on the, just the APU. And then we went to low, which gave us, you know, up to like the 42 or 48 average FPS. As you can see right now, we are getting more than double that. I think we proved our point here. The 2200G was able to get us started, but I highly recommend adding a GPU, even if it's something like an RX 460. The 2400G is a significant jump over the 2200G. I have other videos you guys can check out about the 2400G. Just go to my channel, click the magnifying glass, type in 2400G, you'll find plenty of instances where we used it and tried it out. It's a significant jump over the 2200G. I just feel like the parts I chose on this, um, probably not the best way to spend your money. I feel like you need to add a GPU. In fact, it might even make more sense if you're going to save up for a GPU, just save up that money buy a Ryzen 1200, which is a little bit more powerful on the CPU side, just a little bit than a 2200G. And then you won't have an APU just sitting there doing nothing when you do add a discrete GPU like this. Now it doesn't matter what GPU you add, even something like an RX 460 or an old 750 Ti or something like that, in my opinion, is going to be a better gaming experience than just relying on the 2200G because although decent, still definitely lacks in terms of the performance I was hoping for. It's not a way I would spend my money again. I would definitely would add a graphics card to the build if possible. Also, don't go with the A320 board. I mentioned that in the comments of the last video and the link of parts. Uh, go with the B350 or better. Better overclocking, better build. But anyway, guys, we're gonna go. Do me a favor, if you did an ultra cheap build, comment down below with what your build was and what you think the performance level is and how you like it because it helps people who are searching for parts make a better decision. Also look in the description below, you guys will find links to other things like affiliates, parts, um, discounts on various items and stuff that we've kind of worked out for you guys. And also if you're new around here, why don't you hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you join our community because I think we have a pretty good one. So we're gonna go guys. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.